Okay, so in this video, I'm going to have a look at uh, composite functions. So um, first thing I'm going to do is just have a look at three different functions. Let's take um, f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Let's take another one, g of x. And let's say that's x squared. And we'll take another one. Let's call it, um, let's call it h of x. And let's say that's 1 over x. What we mean by composite functions is that we're just going to combine functions to form another function. So for example, if we take uh, f and g here, f of x and g of x, let's combine those two and see what we get. So let's take, um, we'll write it like this, f of g of x. That's a complicated looking expression here, but it's really quite simple. All it means is that we take uh, a number, we put it into g of x first, and whatever answer we get, then we put it into f of x. So in other words, we start in the middle and we work our way out. I mean, we could even do another one here. We could do, we could put h of f of g of x. But let's start with just two for the moment. Let's start with f of g of x. So what does that mean? Well, that just means we do g of x first. So we leave the f there and we'll do g of x. So g of x, you can see here, is just x squared. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put x squared in here. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to put x squared, we're going to put x squared into f. So what would that mean? Well, instead of x, instead of this x here, we're going to put in x squared. And then we're going to square it and add 1. So what we end up with is x squared squared plus 1. So that would give us x to the power of 4 plus 1. Just multiply the two powers here. So in other words, f of g of x is x to the power of 4 plus 1. So let's see how that works. Uh, we were to put a number into it. So we have f of g of, let's say, we pick a number, let's say minus 2, for example, minus 2. So what does that mean? It just means that we're going to put minus 2 into g first, and then whatever answer we get, we're going to put it into f. We start in the middle, we work our way out. So let's put minus 2 into g. So that would be f of, um, let's see, minus 2. We want to put minus 2 to g. Well, if you put minus 2 into g here, we just need to square it. So minus 2 squared will give us 4. So really what we end up doing is just f of 4. And if you put 4 into f then, well, that's just going to be 4 squared plus 1. So that gives us 16 plus 1, which is 17. Uh, and that's it really. I mean, if you if you think about it, um, if you did it from here, we would just end up with minus 2 to the power of 4 plus 1. So that would give us uh, to 2 is 4, to 4 is 8, to 8 is 16 plus 1, which is 17. So we get the same answer anyway. So if you do it in steps, in other words, if you do it in steps, do G first, then do F, we get 17. Or if you work out what the function would be, composite function f of g of x, x to the power of 4 plus 1, and put the minus 2 in, you're also going to get 17. Okay, so composite functions can be written a number of different ways. Um, I wrote it as f of g of x. It can also be written as um, f little circle g of x. This little circle here just means um, after, f after g of x. So you do f after you do g of x. Um, you can write them, you can just put the f and the g together like this with an x, so that's the same thing, f after g of x. Uh, you can write f g the colon here x if you want to do a mapping kind of function here that's the same thing so it can be written a number of different ways but they all mean the same thing so different books might write them in different ways let's try a um, 
combining the three functions, our three original functions. Remember again, we had, we had three functions up here. We had f of x is equal to x squared plus one. We had g of x is equal to x squared. And we had h of x is equal to one over x. They're fairly simple functions, but the same procedure applies to any type of function. Okay, so let's try three functions. Let's try f after g after h of x. What would that mean? Well, let's see. We have to do f after g after h. In other words, we're, we're going to do h first. So if we do h of x first, h of x will just give us 1 over x. Now, whatever we get, then we need to put that into the next one here. So we need to put that into. So we need to put that into G. So we started with H and what we get, we need to put that into G. So if we do that, then what do we get? So we need to put one over X into G. So we need to do G of one over X. Well, G just squares our input. So we have an X squared here. So what we get is 1 over x squared. So that's just 1, 1 squared is 1, x squared is x squared. And what we get there, then we need to just put that into f. So we're going here now, back to f. So let's do that. So what did we get? We're now, uh, we're now at um, 1 over x squared, so we need to put that into f. So we're going to do f of 1 over x squared. That's just going to be um, squaring it and adding 1. So let's do that. So we have 1 over x squared. We need to square that and we need to add 1. So that will just give us, well, 1 is 1 squared is just 1. x squared squared is x to the power of 4 plus 1. That's it. This is our f after g after h of x. This would be our function here. would be our composite function here. Okay, so if we do an example of that then, um, what we can do is maybe stick a number in here and see what happens. Um, let's take um, f after g after h of, let's say, um, 3. Well, we can, once we've worked out our function over here, our composite function over here, all we've got to do is stick 3 in here for x. We can do it that way. That's not a problem. Let's do it both ways. So let's do it this way first. So it's just 1 over 3 to the power of 4 plus 1. 1 over 3 to the power of 4 plus 1 plus 1 are just 1 and 1 over 81. So that's <clears throat> that's one way of doing it. We could do it by just... Working way down through these functions here. So it's f after g after h. So we got to do um, we got to do h first. So we got to put it in here first, then do g, then do f. Let's see if that works. We should get the same answer. So in other words, we want to do h first. So we're going to do h of we're starting with three here. So what does h do? Well, h is just one over x. So it's going to be one over three. The next thing we got to do is put that into g. So we put g, we're going to do g of one third. What does uh, g do? Well, it squares our input. So we're just going to square that. So it's going to be 1 over 9. And then we've got to uh, put that into f now. So we've got to put 1 over 9 into f. So we've got to do 1 over 9 here. And what, what does f actually do? Well, it um, squares our input and then adds 1. So we've got 1 over 9, which we've got to square, and then we've got to add 1. If we do that, we get 1 over 81 plus 1, which we can see there is exactly the same, which is exactly the same as what we, what we got here. Exactly the same as what we got when we did it this way. Okay, so let's have a look at another example. So let's take um, g of x as x squared plus 2x minus 3. And let's take h of x as 
4 times x plus 2 squared minus 4. Let's just do h after g of 2. Let's see what we get there. Or that can just be written as h of g of 2. You can write it that way, a number of different ways you can write it. So let's see what we get. We could work out the function, but let's just do it in steps. I think we'll do it in steps first. So let's do let's do g of 2 first and see what we get. So remember, we got to do we got to start in the middle here and work our way out to h. We got to start at g, work our way out to h. So we got to put it into g first. We got to put 2 into g. So we got to do g of 2. Well, that's going to be 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 3. If we do that, we get 4 plus 4 minus 3. That will give us 8 uh, minus 3, which is just 5. Now that input then we've got to put into h. So we've got to put 5 into h. If we put 5 into h, that will give us 4 times 5 plus 2 squared minus 4. That's this function up here. Let's run through that. We get um, 4 times 5 plus 2, 7 squared minus 4, um, that will just give us 7 7s, 49 minus 4. Okay, so what we've got to do here is take 49, multiply it by 4, and then subtract 4. That gives us 192. End up with 192. And that's it. This is our um, 192 then, this is our h after g of 2. Okay, so let's look at just one more um, example here. Let's just put a line here, divide this off. Let's take f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 4. Now what I want to do here is just decompose this into three different functions. So I've got to make up three different functions that will be equivalent to this function here when I combine them. So let's see. Really the way you start this is you look at what happens to the input when you put it into the function first. What's the first thing that happens to the input? Well, the first thing that happens to the input is it's squared. So that's going to be my first function. Now you can call them whatever you like. I'm going to start with um, h x is equal to x squared. That's the first thing that happens to our input when we put it into f. <clears throat> the, the input is squared. So that's my first function. I'm going to look at another function now. What happens next to x? What happens next to our input when we put it into f? Well, after we squared it, we multiplied by 3. So my next function is going to be 3 times my input, 3 times x. And let's look at a third one then. What happens after that? Well, we just add 4. So we just add 4 to our input into k. So these are our three functions. Uh, so in other words, this f of x here, this f of x is just going to be equal to uh, k after we do g after we do h of x. So in other words, if you take 2, for example, f of x, or well, let's say our h after g after h of 2, for example, would put the 2 into h first. So you would do h of 2. What did we do to our input in h? We square it, and we get 4. So let's look at g then. We put the 4 into g. Put the 4 into g here. So really what we're doing is we're taking this 4. And we're putting it into g. We're taking this input here, if you like. We're putting it in here as an x into g, as an input. So we put the 4 in here. What does it do? It multiplies it by... 3, so we end up with 12 here. So what do we do next? We look at uh, putting that input into k. 
we put our 12 in here. What happens to that? We add 4. So 12 plus 4, 16. 12 plus 4, 16. And you can see that will work here as well. I mean, if you take if you take uh, our original input here, our original input was 2. If you put 2 in here, we get f of 2 is equal to 3 times 2 squared plus 4. 2 twos are 4, 3 fours are 12, 12 plus 4 will give us 16. We got the same answer by doing it in steps or doing it by putting it into our original function. And that's it really, that's it for, for this particular video.